good day and welcome to today's lesson on interdependence of living things. At the end of class today, you should be able to define the term interdependence. You should also be able to explain how plants and animals depend on each other giving real examples. Lastly, you should also be able to explain how habitats provide resources for plants and animals. All living things and non-living things depend on each other. Interdependence means that two or more living things rely on each other to survive. We call the relationships between plants and animals interdependence. This is when plants and animals depend on each other for food and shelter. The interdependence can take many forms. For example, plants can depend on other plants. Plants can depend on animals. Animals depend on plants. Animals are unable to make their own food. They eat plants or eat animals that eat plants. Therefore, animals depend on plants for food and also shelter in some cases. Animals also depend on other animals. We will look at these things in more detail. Animals depend on plants for protection and shelter. The woodpecker's nest is high up in a tree trunk where the mother raises her chicks. This is to protect them from predators. Some plants depend on animals for protection. An example is the ant's nest in thorn trees. Ants eat some of the leaves, but if elephants eat the leaves the ants bite the elephant to protect the tree. Some plants depend on other plants to grow. A plant that provides food, water, and shelter for another plant is called a host. The mistletoe does not have proper roots to absorb water from the soil. They grow on trees and use nutrients of the host tree. Orchids grow on the tree trunks in humid areas such as forests. Orchids have special roots. Aerial roots absorb moisture from the air. These are examples of plants depending on other plants for survival. Bees and flowers are like good friends in nature. Bees need nectar, which is like sweet juice to them, and flowers make this sweet nectar. But the nectar is hidden deep inside the flower. When a bee goes to a flower to get nectar, it accidentally picks up some pollen, which is like tiny dust. When the bee visits another flower, some of that pollen rubs off onto the new flower, which helps it make seeds. It's like the bee is delivering special magic dust to help the flowers make seeds. The flowers provide sweet nectar for the bees, and in return, the bees help the flowers make new seeds so they can grow into more flowers. It's a wonderful friendship in nature. Let's imagine you have a bunch of friends, which are like seeds, and you want them to go to different places to explore and grow. Seed dispersal is like a cool adventure for these seeds. To disperse seed means to spread from one place to another. Plants have different ways to send their seeds on exciting journeys. Many plants depend on animals to disperse their seeds. The seeds of some plants have hooks. These hooks attach to the fur of animals. Seeds, like hitchhikers, stick to animals' fur or feathers and get carried to new spots. So, seed dispersal is like the plant's way of letting their seeds go on adventures, finding new homes. Some plants make tasty fruits. This encourages animals to eat the fruits. The seeds then pass through the animal unharmed and out the other end. A bird, the lowerys eat the fruits and berries of trees. They then excrete the seeds from the fruit in another place and these seeds germinate and grow. This is another way in which animals help plant seeds to spread. Cow manure is a nutrient-rich fertilizer for plants. It's not just waste, it's a valuable resource. When cows eat plants, their bodies break down the food, and what comes out as manure is loaded with essential nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus. These nutrients act as plant food. Farmers collect this cow manure and spread it over their fields. This process of adding nutrients to the soil to make it more fertile is called fertilization. In simple terms, farmers use cow manure to fertilize the soil, providing plants with the nutrients they need to grow. 
Animals also depend on other animals for survival. The honey badger loves to eat honey. The honey-guyed bird loves to eat the bee larvae but cannot get into the beehive without being stung to death. The bird also cannot break the hive open. So when the honey-guyed finds a beehive, it goes in search of a honey badger. The honey badger has a thick skin that bee stings do not easily get through. The honey guide then convinces the honey badger to follow it to the beehive. The honey badger is able to use its strong legs and claws and teeth to break open the hive and its thick coat protects it from being stung. After the badger has finished eating the delicious golden honey, the honey guide can enjoy all the bee larvae. In the wild, there's a helpful bird called the oxpecker, and it plays a superhero role for many animals, like a zebra. Ticks are tiny creatures that harm animals by sucking their blood. Now, here's where the oxpecker comes in as a hero. The oxpecker is like a natural pest control assistant. It lands on the back of the zebra and starts eating the ticks right off its skin. It's like having a friend who picks off annoying bugs for you. When the oxpecker eats the ticks, it not only helps the animal get relief from those blood-sucking pests but also gets a tasty meal for itself. So, it's a win-win situation, the zebra gets rid of the bothersome ticks and the oxpecker gets a meal. It's a great example of animals working together in nature where each one benefits in its own way. Plants and animals also depend on the resources available in their own habitats. Resources are something you need to survive. Animals and plants depend on non-living things in their habitats to survive. These resources include Water, shelter, food, soil and air. In some places some plants can use up all the resources in the habitat, and other living organisms will not be able to survive in those habitats. Imagine you have a garden with different kinds of plants. Some plants are like guests from other countries, and we call them alien plants. These plants are a bit greedy, they use up a lot of water, grow really fast, and take up a lot of space. Your garden is a home for indigenous plants and animals, the ones that belong there naturally. But because the alien plants are so demanding, they use up a lot of the water that the native plants and animals need to survive. It's like the aliens are taking over the resources, leaving the indigenous plants and animals with not enough to survive. It is important to remove alien plants from the environment. By doing this, we help keep the natural balance, making sure the indigenous plants and animals have enough resources to live healthy and happy lives in their own habitat. We have come to the end of our class today. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's meet next time, otherwise keep well.